Hello everyone! So, um, I'm sorry I have been away for a little while. However, um, I've been going through quite a lot in my personal life. And, um, I just didn't have the time or the energy to be producing videos. But, um, I have, uh, I have recently, um, been going through... Hi, Melissa. Good to see you here. I've, I've recently been going through quite a bit, um, so that's why I haven't been here. Um, but I have been reading all of the messages and the comments that people have been leaving me, um, and I really appreciate all of the support and the feedback. Um, and one of the requests that I've gotten is that um, people want me to color more pages from my own coloring book. Um, so I thought, um, I've already done this page as a background tutorial. You can look at that in the BG Toots section of my channel. Um, uh, but I thought I'd start with the fresh page. Hello, Hella, how are you? Um, I thought I would start with a fresh page just to show you guys, um, how to work on the, the skin and the hair on this particular page. So, um... One thing to note is that today I will be using, um, I won't be using my Prismacolors, I will be using these Walnut Hollow oil pencils. These are vintage pencils that I have got um, specially sourced from a wholesaler. Um, they are not quite available yet on Etsy, but um, when they do become available, I will leave that link in the description below. Um, the reason why I'm playing with these is actually because I will be creating, um, I'm going to be a color consultant and I will be creating a color palette with these, um, and I wanted to, um, use them myself first, uh, before I give any recommendations. So, um, you won't be able to find these right now, um, but as they are made available again, I will leave them in the, uh, a link in the description. Um, the reason why um, I wanted to play with these is because it is a very limited palette. I just want to show you folks that um, you can create beautiful skin tones um, even if you don't have a whole lot of fleshy tones in your particular coloring pencil set. Um, and I will call out the names um, and you can um, try to approximate um, my color palette if you'd like, but um, you know, it, it really is just, um, it, uh, you can, you can use this no matter what brand of pencils you're, you're using. All right, so, um, when I get started, normally what I like to do is I like to kind of block in, um, different areas of the face, um, with, um, the shadows first. So, um, I'm going to be pulling out this color here. It is a nine... 9012 Burnt Umber, and um, you can use a similar brown um, or um, even, you know, a, a, a dark uh, dark blue depending on the lighting scenario, and I'm just going to start here underneath the hairline because I know this will be in shadow for sure, and I haven't quite decided where the light source is coming from yet. Um, but I think I'll probably have it just coming from a generic top down. Hello, Grace. How are you? Uh, good to see everybody again, and I'm happy to be back. So, um, I think I'm going to do just a generic top down lighting scenario, just, just to kind of, um, give you guys a general idea of how you could light and shade this, this page. Um. And while, I, while I'm here, I would also like to um, just uh, give thanks and um, express my gratitude for um, all of the support and um, the nice feedback I've been getting. Um, I do this, guys, for, for you. Um, I, I don't really, um, I don't make any money really doing this, these kind of things, but that's not what's important to me um, when I'm when I'm coloring and when I'm drawing, my most important thing is to extract joy from the process myself, um, you know, just to have fun and, and to, to be myself and, and have, you know, express myself creatively. And then um, when I'm doing these videos, another purpose that I have is just to, um, just to, 
you know, uh, share and bring joy to others. So, um, I have a question here, what type of pencils? I have the Walnut Hollow Farm Burnt Umber. Um, I'm going to be using them in this, um, today, but, um, the colors that I'm using, it's a very limited palette. Um, what I'm using. I also have some old Faber-Castell Spectra colors too, but I may not be mixing them in. We'll see. Um, but these are oil pencils. Um, they are creamy, um, like prison colors, but they are, um, also not as, they don't dull as fast. So it's almost like a hybrid of polychromos and, uh, prison color pencils. They're very, very smooth. Um, they blend very well. I like them a lot. Um, I haven't been using them that much, so that's why I'm giving them a go again uh, today here with this um, this page. Um, so, yeah. Um, they will be made available, I hope, very soon on Etsy. Um, but we'll see when the seller is ready. Um, she, I think she's taking inventory right now and um, still preparing everything. So, um, I, will, I will let you guys know when they are available to the public. Um, I have my little kitty here. Hold on, she wants to be picked up. Here we go, little Miss Abby girl. All right, <laughs> now we've got a little coloring companion. Oh no, she wants to have. Okay, well, you know, this is live, guys, so I work with what I can do. <laughs> She likes to investigate the camera. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> okay, cutie. <laughs> um, but what I was saying before is I I'm just um, super grateful to have the opportunity to be able to show you guys how to do this stuff and, um, and to chat with you and to talk with you. So... Um, thank you guys so much for, for uh, hanging out with me, and, um, and I really enjoy it. Uh, okay, so now that I've kind of got a general idea of um, where the shadows will fall um, around her hairline, and I've solidified my idea of... <laughs> okay, abs. <laughs> my cutie. So, oh, of course, of course I'm happy to be here, guys. And, uh, so anyway, um, I'll be, I'll be doing the, the eyelid next, um, this, this here. So what I'm doing is I'm just sort of gently, lightly, I'm not going for the full strength of the value that I want to achieve on the skin right now. What I'm doing is I'm just gently laying in the general idea of where I'm, I'm feeling out where my shadows will be. And, um, the reason why... I like to do this before I go heavy handed with, with how dark I actually want them to be is this allows me to adjust and adapt if I make a mistake or I need to change something. It's not as difficult if you don't go full force with the with the um, the strength of your pencil right away. So I'm just gently, lightly laying in where I think these shadows will go. And then um, as it as it builds and develops, then I will then um, go ahead and refine and add more depth to that shadow. So now I'm traveling, so I've kind of got an idea of where, where the shadows will go around her eye. So let me zoom in actually so that you guys can see better what I'm doing. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and go in with the same color and I'm and what I like to do is um, to keep the color consistency um, nice I like to um, always use um, the same color everywhere all at once so I'm going to go through and touch every shadow with this burnt umber and that will allow me to um, maintain like a, a color um, consistency so so like if I were to jump around with all sorts of different colors, um, then then later on it would be hard to make it look harmonious. Um, so that's why I, I'm going to use this as the base for all of the shadows. And then I'll go in and there are under, different undertones depending on the location of, this, of the skin. Um, 
you know, uh, some some areas of your face will be more red than others, or or have a slight bluish undertone. And those those colors I will add in later once I've got um, the base the base value um, ideas down. So now I'm just gonna come in. And I'm just working through where I want to put the shadows around the nostrils. Mm -hmm. All right. And now we do have some shading that will happen on this upper lip because of the shadow of the nose, but it's very easy to make it look like a mustache. So it's this is a delicate spot. Um, so, so what I encourage you to do is to go lighter than what you think you need, and at the end, um, you can darken if necessary. So that's where I think I'm going to be with that guy. Um, the lips I'm going to skip because they really do have a different pigmentation than the skin. Um, and instead, I will move right on down to the chin area here. And um, what's important to note about um, skin in general is that um, it's it's everybody has basically the same um, colors in their skin. Uh, it's all, always browns, reds, and um, some oranges, and and it's just a the different mixture as to what makes it a different pigmentation. So. Um, you know, but we all have basic, basically the, the primary colors in our skin. It's the, the three things that blend all the other colors together. So we all have the same basic structure. It's just how, how they're mixed together is what creates the final product. Um, always greater than its parts. But yeah, I was saying that I'm grateful, and I really am. Um, there, there are a lot of um, negative things happening in um, in the world and also in the coloring community, um, uh, dealing with a little bit of trolling going on. Um, but you know, in the end, um, I, I look at all of of um, my friends that I've made here, and all of the things that I've learned um, throughout the course of creating my first coloring book and and um, joining the coloring community. And I really have to say, like, I really, in order to, to be um, grateful, sometimes it's difficult, especially when you're dealing with a lot of difficult things in your life, um, you know, any kind of conflict, or in my case, just some personal struggles, um, some family things, and um, work-related things. Um, but in the end, you know, every, every day I'm able to come home and, and, pick up my pencils or my paint and and express myself and and be creative and that is amazing to me um and the fact that I can share it with you folks and um and be a part of a greater community and help people out um this is this is really what life is all about to me um I really feel like uh everybody should be so lucky as to find something like that in their lives so um, I just want to say thank you folks so much. And um, in order to stay positive and to and to overcome any sort of obstacles I'm dealing with, I always try to just count my blessings and be grateful because it does really help me. And I hope it would help you too. If, if, if you're struggling through something, you know, if, if you're not feeling great or, you know, you, you, maybe you're um, dealing with some negativity yourself in your life, um, I just encourage you to just remember what you what you have. I mean, I'm grateful for the roof over my head, for my beautiful kitty who's so sweet, for my friends and my family and my boyfriend, for everything I have. I'm so so very grateful, and and lucky. Um, so yeah, just uh, oh, I'm off camera. Sorry, um, getting into chatting. So yes, thank you, thank you so much, folks. Um, can't express how much I, I really do appreciate um, listening to all of your nice comments and feedback. Um, so, okay, so this is an elf ear. 
or a, or a sprite ear, whatever you want to call her. Um, so it doesn't have to be any kind of accurate because it's it's not meant to be a normal human ear. So I'm just making this up, um, just just sort of wherever I feel like it might be shadowy. I'm just putting a putting a darkness, and there's no right or wrong. Um. Yeah, so, all right, here we go. Um, okay, so now that I'm almost done locking in the basic ideas for the shadows for her face, I'm going to carry this all through. Now, I do want some shadows for her cheek here, but I'm going to go super light because I want this to have a redder tone. So again, I'm just sort of blocking it out, trying to figure out, and I had left a slight light line in the line work of where I thought the cheekbone should go, so you can follow that as a guide. And it kind of, let's see, so it will kind of come down here. So, because of her cheekbone, so I'm kind of drawing around that. Okay, yep, and then so it'll flow kind of somewhere around here, and I'm I'm drawing on my experience of. Uh, skin. I also do sometimes look at pictures when I need to. You can also take photos of yourself. I do this frequently when I'm not sure about things. Oh, I've got the little kitty again. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Hey, sweetheart. <laughs> she really wants attention. Yeah. All right. So now, uh, now that I've got a general idea of where all of this is going to be darker, and this does not have to be perfect one bit, I'm going to um, go down into the the. Uh, Neck, <laughs> Abby. <laughs> yeah, well, hold on, guys. Sorry, this is live. <laughs> Let me just uh, put her in my lap again. Hopefully, she stays there. This time. All right, sweetheart, stay there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, good. I'm so happy that you guys are learning from me coloring live. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's see if we can make this work here. Um, okay, so I'm going to start on the neck now. And I feel like necks are actually tricky for people um, because uh, they don't have a whole lot of defined outer edges or shape. But there is a lot of shadowing going on um, because of the face. So I feel like this is a difficult area for a lot of people. Um, I struggled with it for a long time when I first started drawing. So I totally get it. Um, you are not alone. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how I do it on this particular, um, this particular drawing. Let's see if I can get closer so I can draw. Better. Okay. Yeah. So I think, and we have here. I, I've I've drawn a, a little divot here where the the little um, it's like a little depression that happens in in those who are skinnier than I am. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. 
So I'll just sort of carry that up. Now, the trick with this is a lot of people go too dark. You don't want to go too dark because then it'll look like she's got like a tracheotomy or something. Um, so I would keep it pretty, pretty light, um, but it is there. Um, so we're going to carry this sort of... Um, this is a muscle that's defining this this uh, this darkness here. So so there's a muscle and then an another muscle. So the in between part of there it gets a little bit of darkness, but not a whole lot. Okay, and then um, because she has this earring here, I'm going to put a drop shadow on her neck. So I'm gonna. It looks as though I'm really coming, the light is really coming from like top, um, it's almost right overhead, but it is, has a little bit of an angle to it. So I'm going to reflect that down here in the neck as well and put the shadow a little bit behind that feather. And this will allow the feather to stand off away from the neck and feel like it is not right up against her skin and um, when you get closer to the object you can go darker but again I'm not doing the full value strength of the areas that I want to to make darker I'm just sort of getting a general idea right now and then I will refine and add to it as I go um, so we're going to go under this bit of hair here and, and maybe that's standing off from the neck more so I'm gonna the the farther away the object is from the surface that's that it's casting the shadow on the the, the bigger the shadow will look so if it's very very close to the object then the shadow is small and tight to it and if the the object is farther away then the, then the shadow becomes bigger and softer and also um, lighter in value actually so it's it's less dark but larger area that it covers um, that's just a general rule with art okay so now we've got um, the basic areas of the um, neck blocked in uh, as far as like where, where the shadows might go but I've got this shoulder element and this is actually a tricky thing um, so I'm going to Let's see here, I'm going to decide where her shoulder meets her neck, and I think it will will flow sort of something like this here, okay? And now, because her shoulder is part of her neck, we want to carry that up a little bit so it feels like it's not disconnected. Everything's connected in the body, so we want to, we want to make sure that it feels that way when we... Let me create these shadows. Um, and then I'm going to also, since the light is coming from the top and slightly to the left, I'm also going to now give a nice little shadow area to her back to differentiate her skin from the background, whatever that will be. Um, And, and we have this area of highlight that I've sort of denoted here with that little half moon type shape. So I'm going to flow this and let's see if I can see, I can't really see the chat so good. Uh, let's see if I can bring it up on my machine, on my laptop, because um, I feel like I'm missing some comments, <laughs> and I don't mean to. Let's see, here, here it is on my... Okay. Let's see, where are you guys? Sorry, I, I still don't do this enough. Um... Okay. <laughs> Oh, my cat reminds them of um, a colorful lights 
life's cat Kenji. That's great. Um, yeah, I, you know, it's funny. Um, Abby will always, uh, she just mm -hmm. always has to make a, a featured entrance in my <laughs> videos. Um, I think it's just, uh, she's a story, you know? <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, they can be tricky. Um, I'm still learning. I'm still trying to get better at doing live streams, guys. But um, the only way that you get better at doing something is by doing it. So thank you for your patience and letting me learn and not uh, being too harsh on me. Um, I know some of my videos are not the best. Uh, but um, every day I'm working on trying to improve and get better. And that's really the only thing that we can do as people. I mean, you know, it's that's the only way we learn. Um, so, okay, so I'm going to, um, even though I faded this out in the drawing, I'm going to continue it all the way down. And you can do whatever you want here. Um... And I have started work on my new book, um, so that will be exciting. Uh, let's let's see. Let's put an arm. I must have missed that when I was drawing it. I'm sorry, guys, but that I just threw it in there. There. So let's put in some shadow behind her arm. And, um, yeah, so I started on my new book, and, and I've actually been, um, doing it more grayscale, um, because I noticed that, uh, Grace said that she's liking grayscale. Um, so yeah, I've been doing more shading. Um, I realized that even though I love these, these pages where, uh, there might not be a whole lot of shading so that you can pick what light angle uh, you at whatever light angle you want um, that I realized that not a whole lot of other colorists really enjoy this um, this type of page and so um, I'm learning and um, figuring out what you guys really want and need out of a coloring page um, so that is something that I have um, adapted to um, I'm, I've basically been just shading more of my um, pages um, so the next book will be very different in that way. It should be a lot easier for you to figure out where, where to put the darks and lights. Um, and I really appreciate all of that feedback, um, because that is something that, um, you know, I, as an artist, I feel comfortable figuring that out, but I realize that, um, people who aren't trained or, or just starting out may not feel as comfortable um, for, for this, this next book, Grace, there will be a couple of mermaids, but, um, the theme of the book is steampunk, so they will be steampunk mermaids, so it will be very different. Um, it's like a steampunk fantasy, um, alternate universe, it's got a story to it this time that's much more cohesive, um, I'm still in the process of writing the story, but, um, it is, um, it is, it is different. <laughs> I have not seen anything like it, so I'm hoping that we'll, it will be unique and original, but, um, you know, nobody, you know, nobody can make everything 100% unique, um, so, but yeah, anyway, it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. Um, steampunk mermaid sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there will be simple pages and detailed pages, but, um, it will, it will be more shading and less line art, so that way you guys um, won't have to work so hard. You can just sit back and enjoy the coloring. Okay, so... Um, Alright, so we've got some shadows happening here and this is the back of the shoulder going into the neck 
So I'm just going to go ahead and join that up with that little that little guideline there that I put. I've seen that book. It looks beautiful. Um, hopefully, uh, I'll, I'll get the chance to get one myself. The Julia Spree book. Mm -mm. Okay, so all of this will be in shadow, so I've just given it a light base coat for the most part. Um, this will probably be the darkest area of the page. Okay. And now there will be some shadow because the highlight on her shoulder will be lighter than this area here. So I'll just throw in a little bit of darkness. Okay, so then we'll also flow down through here. And that should do it for the for the arm there. Mm -hmm. All right, and then let's move over on to her chest area. Um, so again, we're going to define the lights and the darks. And this makes it a lot easier than when you are adding the color. If you just use one, one color to start, to f figure out where the darkness is and, and, and where you need to put the shadows, then when you go to add all the color, it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. And now this area here, there, this is her collarbone, so the area right above it will be darker because that gets an indentation. And you can see that on yourself. Um, that it kind of um, gets um, a little bit of darkness because it's just not as high up, closer to the light as the as the collarbone. So I'm going to join that here, and this is that feather shadow. Let's just make sure that I know what that is. Um, and let's just bring this up because again everything's connected so you want to kind of soften and fade it out no harsh lines on the skin it's all soft so I use many layers I uh, probably won't be able to do finish the skin today but I will get as far as possible um, so we're gonna actually this out a little bit too. And now just under the collarbone, because the collarbone is sticking out, it also gets some shadow. Like so. And we'll connect that on down. Now her chest here is tricky because it is foreshortened. But that's why I'm here. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, it's funny because um, it's not always soothing. If you were to see me at a sporting game or at a concert or <laughs> I can shout too. 
but whenever I sit down to draw or color, it just instantly relaxes me. I feel like at peace and I can just go into my little happy place and it just puts me right at home. Um, I've been painting and drawing pretty much my whole life and it's the only thing that um, I really feel is like part of who I am. So I, I, I think that's why um, when I sit in color and talk with you guys, it just comes out like that. Um, it's not intentional. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can scream and shout and I can be goofy and, and um, really uh, outrageous too. So it's not, I'm not always cool, calm, and collected, but um, that's why I love to color and to draw is because it just puts me in that space where um, nothing can touch me, you know, I just, I just love it. Um, so I'm just, now I'm sort of just jumping around, seeing wherever it might need a little bit of adjustment. Um, I'm just kind of, uh, trying to work all of the general areas out first, and then we'll come back and, and do a nicer job with the, the shading and the finished drawing. Um, so we're gonna, now this is tricky because it's probably in a good deal of light because it's her shoulder so I'm not gonna go too heavy on this guy but I do want to um, still differentiate the difference between her chest area and the shoulder with the shadows so you can see how I just sort of like work it out um, I don't necessarily finish any spot all at once. I just sort of jump around until I feel um, it's it's worked through. Now the, her shoulder blade will be over here, but it's not going to be very visible. So I'm just going to sort of... I mean her collarbone, I'm sorry. I'm just going to kind of gently... Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Caitlin says, thank you so much for this tutorial. You explain things so well. Um, I used to be an art teacher. Um, I couldn't make a living doing it. You know, you know teachers don't get paid very well. Um, and I live in a very expensive area, unfortunately. The cost of living here is very high. So I couldn't, uh, I couldn't make ends meet doing it, but I do enjoy teaching people how to draw and how to color so much it's um i feel like when somebody gets something you know it, it's just amazing uh, so i'm really glad that you guys like this um okay so we're we're getting pretty pretty close um i'm just going to show you now where i've gotten at this point um we've got uh quite a bit of shadow going on oh see I missed a spot, so I'm going to go back and, and just go ahead and, and this is always helpful um, when you're, when you're um, working, if, if you want to just take a step back once you think you've finished something, just take a look at what you've done, because it might be that you did miss something, and that happens to me all the time, there's nothing wrong with that, um, that's just, you know, how art is sometimes, so let's go through and look, yep, okay, I think it's starting to, it's starting to come to life, but it's not there yet, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap out my, my um, burnt umber, and I'm going to grab a color that for most of you may be very, very um, intimidating, but um, the reason why I go right for this really dark red, even though um, I'm, I'm going to make her skin fairly pale, is that, um, I'd like to get, I like to figure out the undertones of the skin next. So first, first is shadow, defining the shadows. Second is undertones. Um, and the reason why I like to do it in this order is because then when I go over it, um, and blend and finish things off, those undertones will be buried under layers of other colors that are not so dramatic. So... Um, I'm going to say um, when you're when you're doing the undertones in skin, 
if you want to go this way, you can skip this um, stage if you're not comfortable doing it. Um, but if you're going to do it this way, start out light. You can always layer and add more later. Uh, hold on, pardon me. I'm going to take a sip of my drink. Um, so I'm going to start, like I was saying, um, the cheek area gets a lot of red. Um, no matter what skin tone you are, um, it, it does vary depending on, on which um, pigmentation you have in your skin, but... In general, um, no matter what, you always have some red in your cheek area. So I'm going to start at the hairline, and I like to start where I think the areas are going to be darkest first, so I can test and see if I make a mistake in a dark area. Very, very easy to correct. But once you get into the lighter areas of the skin, um, it does become much more difficult to correct. You need to grab your eraser, and mm -hmm. there's all sorts of issues with that. Um, I try not to erase as much as possible, um, but, but we'll see what we can do. So I'm just layering in, and now this is so light that it might be hard for you guys to even see it. Let me see if I can zoom in. Well, not that much. Okay, so so that way you guys can see. I'm just barely touching the paper. I'm using the flat of a pencil. Oh, and this is, um, if you're using the Walnut Hollow Farm Pencils, this is 9023 Alizarin Crimson. You can use a similar shade in whatever brand of pencils you have. It's a very dark red with some cool undertones to it. So it's on the, the side of magenta. Um, and... Uh, we can just go ahead and gently layer in, barely touching the paper. But these undertones later when we blend will come through. We'll see. Okay, so we've got some nice blush happening there. I'm also going to go above the shadow line. And just gently put a little bit of value, pure alizarin crimson with no burnt umber. And I'm using circular motions, um, but again, um, I'm, I'm using such a light touch that really you can use back and forth motions. You can use whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I just find that circular motions do tend to blend out easier on skin much nicer. So, but do what you're comfortable with, because in the end, if you don't have fun and you're not comfortable, then what's the point? Um, Grace, um, oh, I'm sorry, I have, I have a couple of comments. Thank you, Hella, I'm glad you like it already. And Caitlin, um, how do I determine where the undertones go? Okay, well, that's a great question. Uh, that actually has a lot to do with anatomy and physiology. Um, I'm not going to get all into the depth of that right now, but I'm going to say that um, there are areas in your face and in your skin. Okay, I want you to look. I'm, we're we're going to have a little anatomy lesson right here. I want you to look at the wrist at your wrist. Just take a look at your wrist. I'm going to show you mine in case you don't have a wrist. Okay, so um, you can see here I've got. This pad of my um, my hand here has like a reddish tone to it. That's because the the blood vessels there and and the the area of your skin has more red pigmentation in it. It's 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 um, just that's how it is. I don't know if it's clear in the video, uh, but it it has a redder tone to it. And then when you look here at the vein that's running under your skin, um, there's this blue tinge to it. And that's because the vein that's under there is actually, in anatomy, there's ingoing and outgoing veins to your heart. I'm not going to get all of it into how that happens, but it's it's a deprived oxygen blood. So this, this vein here, yeah, it's like a blue-green. So that undertone shows through... Um, and, and so you can see skin is a, a translucent, it's not, um, opaque. So everything that you have going on, so like, like 
you know, um, I have like, again, that bluish line going through here. Um, so, so the ruddy complexion that you get from your cheeks is because the, the blood there is closer to the, the surface of your skin. And so it's like, yeah, exactly. All right, I won't go into any more details. Um, but yeah, you get it. So so that's just um, from observation. I, I've taken some anatomy classes um, be, just um, for that purpose of understanding um, how, how like the body works. So that way you know where to put those undertones. Um, but you don't need to study anatomy to know. You can just look at your own self and, and say, oh, I, I've that looks a little red there. I'm going to add some more red. So you can do it just by pure observation if you want to. Um, and then where do I get these pencils? So Grace asks where I get these pencils. So I have um, a friend on Etsy who is a wholesaler. Um, and she uh, she's actually the one who's been carrying my coloring book. And she asked me if I would be a color consultant for her and, um, and help her pick out color palettes for these pencils. So um, I was basically hired by her to um, come up with um, different, um, different palettes so that she can sell them in bundles on her Etsy shop. So um, right now they are not available because she's still preparing the pencils. She's um, inventorying them and um, getting them out of their... Um, they're, you know, she's packaging them up and all that. So, um, when they are available, I will put a link to, yep, the, the Colorful Birdhouse Boutique. That's the Etsy shop. So you can, you can go ahead and follow that shop. Um, and I will put a link down in the description below for you guys to go ahead and check that out. Um, and I'll, I'll let you guys know, um, in the description when it, they are available as well. So that way you can just go ahead and buy them. Um... But it's not really important to me, I think, the brand of the pencils so much as the, the colors and um, the way that you use them. So you can use um, these, these coloring techniques no matter the, the color of uh, the, the brand of pencils that you have. So I've put some, some red around her nose. And um, now I'm going to move into the, the lips. I'm going to, um, since the lips are pigmented, with um, red very, very much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this same color. Again, to achieve color harmony, you wanna to touch anywhere on the page where that color might be used, and then it will flow and feel all connected. So we're gonna add some, some of this beautiful, I love this color, this beautiful lizard and crimson. Alright, sorry about that folks. It looks as though um, my Wi-Fi cut out. Bummer. Oh, it looks like I lost a bunch of people. I'm sorry about that. Um, let's see, I have a question here. What are my favorite pencils to use, Grace? Um, my favorite pencils are the Prismacolor pencils. Um, that's just because I'm the most familiar with them out of any of, of the pencils. I've been using um, Prismacolors now for, um, since I was in high school, so a long, long time. I'm, I'm older than I seem. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I would say my favorite brand is the, the Prismacolors just because of my familiarity. However, um, as I try different brands and as I've been using all sorts of different, um, different media, I really do say, um, I can pretty much work in just about any of them. Um, it doesn't really matter the brand so much to me as, um, more the color range that I have and also, um, just whether or not I like the feel. Ugh, sorry about that. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Um, yeah, so anyway, I was saying, um, I, I do like the softer pencils in general, and these are very soft, and I think that's why I'm really enjoying them. Um, I do like the softer pencils better only because I, 
Um, I use my hands all day for work and then I use my hands for drawing and um, having to press harder on the page. Um, it just hurts my hands over time and I just, I try to take really good care of my hands. Um, so I just prefer <clears throat> softer pencils so that way, uh, you know, I, I'm not putting as much stress on them. Hold on, let me take a sip. Okay, so let's see here. I'm sorry that uh, my, my Wi-Fi cut out there. Um, Grace says, I like all of my pencils. They're different. Prismas, Polys, and Shearer Farben. I've heard of those. I haven't tried those yet. Um, I think, uh, I think I've seen that on a couple other YouTuber channels, so that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna shift away from, I've been working on this area with the red. Well, if you'll see, um, people's ears also tend to have a whole lot of red in them. Let me zoom in so that way you guys can see better. Um, so... So I'm going to also start here at the tip of the ear and just gently lay in some of this beautiful, beautiful um, this alizarin crimson color. And now I'm both layering into the shadows and also just on the borders where I left these spaces um, for this red color so that it really comes through and becomes very obvious that there's some red in that skin. Alright. So yeah, I think, um, honestly, I think that Pencil brands um, don't matter too much. Um, I think everybody's got to find what works for them. A lot of people tell me that they have really heavy hand, um, that they, they press very hard when they color, which is like the total opposite of how I color. Um, so for them, um, something like a harder pencil like Polychromos would be excellent because um, it that, that pencil really does allow that kind of pressure, um, where like Prisma it would be, just be like a big mess. Um, so it really does depend on, on the person and, and how you color and uh, your own personal coloring preference as far as like how it feels on the paper. Um, so what I recommend doing if you're like looking for the perfect brand of pencils for you is to get open source if possible, like open stock rather, um, of, of all sorts of different colors um, and um, just work with them and see how you, how they feel when you color and what you like um, and that will really give you um, the best determination as to what what pencils you should be using yourself um, I, th I think that's a very very personal choice let's see here so grace says um, she has other pencils as well she worked with her deli pencils last night and she just got Black Widow pencils. I just got some Black Widow pencils recently, too, and I have yet to use them, but I, I should. Um, uh, I've just been, you know, I, I gravitate towards my Prismas, and it's hard for me to get away from them. So, um, because I have so many colors now with, with the new set, so it's it's like, woo, kid in the candy store. <laughs> I just can't, <laughs> I just can't seem to, to part with them. Um... Let's see, she says she's a very heavy-handed colorist, and someone said in my comments that they winced when they saw me using some of your pencils. Oh, well, I mean, you color how you want, girl, because I, I don't think it matters what anybody else says as long as you're having fun. Um, but, um, you know, if, if you do have trouble and you want some tips on how to um, lighten up your pencil hold, I can help you out with that. But um, I, I think... You know, people people can be very judgy. I've experienced that myself, actually, quite recently, um, and um, I've I've decided that um, you know I'm not I'm not going to take those things to heart because in the end, it really just matters what I feel and what I'm what I'm doing with my work. Um, if 
if uh, if somebody doesn't like it, then they can go away and, and look at something else. It's I'm not doing anybody any harm by um, by showing you how I work. So um, same goes for you. You know, you you do you, and if you're happy with the ha how you color, then don't let anybody make you feel bad for that. That's that's um, that negativity is not useful or helpful in the um, especially in the coloring community where I feel like we're all just here to have fun and, and to, to express ourselves and there's no wrong way to express yourself in art. Um, so, so you, you just do whatever you, whatever you like to do. Um, let's see. Um, so you did swatch the pencil, the, the Black Widow pencils. Yeah, I need to swatch mine and then I'm sure as soon as I swatch them, I'll want to use them. <laughs> And Caitlin says, um, I have to hold my pencil towards the back to keep from pressing hard. Um, people will always try to bring you down. It's best just to let it roll off. Yeah. Now, I mean, I'm one of those people who, um, you know, I do, I do tend to care what people say. Um, and so I, I get, I get it. Like, um, I understand, um, how negativity can affect you. Um, but I'm learning how to just block that out. And, and the main, um, way that I learn how to, um, just avoid, um, feeling badly if somebody says something like that is just to remember, like, I've been drawing and painting and, and coloring, um, my whole life. And I've only just now started, um, sharing it on social media. Um, and I've been very, very happy by myself doing it on my own for a long, long time. So I just have to keep reminding myself that I'm doing it for me, um, and so are you. You're just doing it for you. We share because um, we love to share and we want to, um, you know, share our experiences and, and learn and grow that way and, and teach other people too, and, and that's awesome. But, like, you you really have to just remember that you're doing it for yourself first. And and if, you, if everybody were to go off of social media tomorrow, would you still be happy doing what you're doing? And if the answer is yes, then then, you know, who cares what somebody says about what you're doing because um, that's that's not the most important thing. Um, yeah, Grace, I actually had some very threatening and awful comments recently myself. Um, you know, I guess, um, you know, everybody gets a troll here and there every once in a while. Um, even, even if you have the nicest of intentions and, and you try to be a decent person, it doesn't matter. Um, there's always going to be somebody out there who's having a bad day, who takes it out on you for some reason that, you know, you're never going to understand. Um, so, so yeah, you just, I, I know it's really hard and it sucks because it's like, I wish that the world wasn't like that because then, um, you know, I think everybody would just be a whole lot happier if we were just always uplifting and supporting each other, but unfortunately it seems like that's not always the case, and we just have to kind of like, um, I try to give those kind of people a pass because I don't know what they're going through, I don't know what they're dealing with, maybe they're having a rotten day and, and they just saw me and just didn't, didn't, they were thoughtless, you know, I think sometimes it's just thoughtless meanness that's coming out. Um, so we, we all have to kind of just, um, try to, t try to move on from that. Um, I'm going to switch over now. I know this also looks very strange, um, but you, uh, you did see my palette is extremely limited here. Let me bring it out again. Um, I only have a couple of these colors. I am not going to be using these oranges. Um, they, they will be way too orange for her skin tone. I'm doing like a fair skinned person like myself. Um, so you can see these, these oranges, I don't really have that type of undertone in my skin. I have a very pink undertone. Um, but I will need to, um, I can't just have it be pink and brown. So I will need to bring some yellow in. So I'm going to use this Walnut Hollow Farm. Um, it is the 90, oh, focus, 9011 Yellow Ochre. Um, and uh, you have to be very judicious with this this color. It has to, again, go on pretty lightly. Um, I'm going to put this anywhere where the light... Let's see, we've got some comments here. I, so Caitlin says, I'm so sorry, Grace. I sometimes think it's jealousy that causes other people to be so nasty. 
Laura, you're very talented and I love how you teach. Thank you for sharing yourself. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to pretend to understand um, what the motivation is behind that kind of behavior because I just, I don't get it. I, I have um, never uh, tried to bully somebody or wanted to bully somebody, so I don't really understand where where that comes from or, or why people would go there. Um, but I feel like um, I have been bullied before in the past. Um, I was bullied actually quite a lot in middle school because I was a very artistic and very different kid. Didn't, um, you know, I, I had a, a very nice group of friends who, who I loved, but I, I didn't always fit the social norms. Um, I was a little bit weird. And so I did get bullied as a kid. Um, and so I've just learned that most of the time, the people who bully, um, they don't actually, it's not a personal attack on you. Most of the time, it's actually a response to something that they're dealing with in their personal life. And the reason I know that is because the, the one girl who bullied me very badly when I was a girl, um, she bullied me, she she would write nasty notes to me and, and um, do all sorts of horrible things. Um, she apologized to me at the end of my senior year of high school, and she said, and, and, and it's because that I reacted to her with kindness um, and never with hatred that I think that she realized um, that she had done wrong. And that apology meant a lot to me because it was her acknowledging the fact that, um, you know, it wasn't right what she did. But she did explain to me then that she had been going through um, her parents' divorce at that period of her life. And she saw that I was happy and, and doing my own thing and, and um, that she um, just lashed out at me for that, basically. Um, so I try to now, whenever I see a bully, um, just try to remember, like, um, they are humans too. They might be going through something that we just have no idea um, what it is. Um, and that um, a little bit of understanding sometimes goes a long way to resolve the issue and to keep bullies from... Um, getting um, worse. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, not bullies are not evil people. Um, usually it's just somebody who's hurting themselves. Um, let's see. So <laughs> Grace says, love yellow ochre. <laughs> me too. I, I, I really enjoy this color here. Let me zoom in so that I can uh, show you better. Um, and then Grace said, it's the internet. Someone told me once, if you wouldn't say it to their face, don't do it. People hide behind their computer, keyboard warriors. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, I, I try to always um, remember that, that the person on the other side is a human being. Um, and and we, all, we all sometimes forget that. Um, but I think if, if we just keep um, reminding ourselves all the time, then I think that the internet would be a nicer place for everybody. But... I mean, I see all the time, even on YouTube, um, people making nasty comments to each other and being mean to each other. I just don't get it. Um, there's there's no need for that. Um, but it is what it is. Yep, only love can drive out hate. That's true, Caitlin. I totally agree. Um, and so we're going to try and spread love. That's what this channel is all about, is just love. Love for coloring, love for each other love for life so grateful to be here with a roof over my head a cute kitty in my lap and a coloring page and some pencils to work on <laughs> let's see try to be compassionate towards others that's great grace I, I i think that um a lot of the people in the coloring community are awesome awesome individuals who um really really uh embody that that love and compassion for other people and I think that's why I love um, the coloring community so much is because even though I have had an experience with trolls, it doesn't take away all of the amazing and wonderful people that I've met here, um, both here on YouTube and on Instagram and Facebook and all that. Um, it does not remove that, that um, amazing connection that we've all established. So, um, yeah, it's... it's uh, it's a shame that a few people can make us feel bad, though. Um, it's uh, pretty sad, actually, I think. So we didn't have a whole lot of pink undertones in the um, the neck and the um, and the shoulders. 
Um, I may go back actually because sometimes the chest area can get a little pink. Um, so I may go back to that, but uh, I am going to throw in this yellow ochre anywhere where there are highlights. I don't like to leave the page white, um, and the reason why is because um, it, it looks unfinished. So I always throw at least a light layer of some color, even if it's so faint you can hardly even see it. It might look white, but it's not white. Um, it just gives it a, a nice little finishing touch. So we're going to throw this yellow ochre on there, and then I'm going to go back in with, I think, the brown, and also the we might actually try out that peachy color. I'm not sure how it will come out. Um, we'll see what that looks like. This is all an experiment. <laughs> but I'm showing you guys that you can create um, pretty nice skin tones with just a very few amount of colors. Uh, it's pretty, pretty fun. Pretty fun stuff. Well, hello, Gabrielle! I'm doing much better today. Thank you. I hope you are doing well as well. Wait, but well as well. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was not intentional. Um, so we're just going to... Whoop! Off camera. Sorry. We're just going to throw in some yellow. And right now she looks like she has jaundice, but that's okay. We're going to fix it. What we're going to do is take it out of this yellow tone by layering it with some more pinks and browns. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. But I like to give like this golden undertone to the highlights because then it really does feel like there's like light um, interacting with her skin. So we're, we're, but don't worry, she's not going to be yellow for too long. Oh, where are we? Here, let me, uh... Oh, hello, Gabrielle! Yes, we interact on uh, Instagram all the time. That's great. Yeah, Instagram is my favorite social media platform. That's where I am all the time. Right now, it's undergoing some troll excavation. Um, I had a, a troll basically drop about 50 comments on every post I have, so I, I archived them until I can clean it all up. But um, they've been blocked, so that should end. That should be over. So yeah, I totally get the whole bully thing. I know people people deal with it all, all the time on, on the internet, and it sucks, but um, unfortunately... That's, you get the good with the bad, right guys? It's, it's okay. Um, it's not going to stop me from sharing because you guys are what keeps me going. Okay, Gabrielle, so um, we have here the Walnut Hollow Farms. This is the 9011 Yellow Ochre. Um, these are pencils that are right now pretty difficult to get, um, but they will be available pretty soon on Etsy, I hope. Um, let me zoom out so that way I stop going off camera so much. Um, uh, the, these pencils will be available soon and I will put a link in the description below. Um, the Etsy seller right now is preparing them for um, for sale. She got them out of a, a big warehouse a factory or something. Um, so they need to be inventoried and um, all sorts of you know packaged and stuff like that. So um, she's working on it, but um, I am testing them out and um, putting together color palettes for her. So in order to do that, um, I have to use them. <laughs> so I thought uh, I would go ahead and show you guys what I'm doing. And I like to do tests and stuff on my own pages. That way if I really junk them up badly, I don't feel bad <laughs> because it's my work. So it's like, oh, whatever. Because um, I've messed up some um, coloring pages from other artists and I feel so bad about it. I'm like, oh no, now I have to maybe buy that book again. <laughs> so, all right. So we've got this warm yellow, um, like glowy uh, sun type, 
look going on right now, but um, we don't want it to be yellow. We want it to be a peachy, a light peachy tone. So I'm going to go in now and um, I'm going to grab, and again, this seems very counterintuitive to a lot of people, but I'm going to use this 9015 Red Violet. And the reason why is violet is the complementary opposite of yellow. So on the color wheel, um, actually, let me, yeah, let me grab my color wheel. Okay, I can show you. So on the color wheel, we have yellow, and yeah, this is a really old color wheel, so sorry about that. So we have yellow and violet. Um, in order to neutralize the yellow and make it more, uh, less vibrant and more in the neutral scale, you want to add the opposite to it. So I'm choosing red violet, which is close, but not exactly the opposite because I don't want to completely neutralize the, the yellow, but instead I just want to take it out of that yellow tone and make it, um, more like a peachy tone. So... We're going to use this 90116 Red Violet, and I'm going to start where I started at the beginning, which was the top. Oh, sorry, the camera is... I have a new camera mount, and I'm not sure if I like it, but we're, we're working through it. Okay, so I'm going to start up here. And hopefully, in theory, <laughs> this will be quite lovely when we mix it together. And we're going to go just gently over. And this is a very advanced technique. Um, I would say that um, you could very easily take the, the values that I'm applying and instead use all sorts of different peaches and browns if you have those in your palette. But I wanted to show you how you could achieve a nice skin tone with only a few basic um, primary colors. Let's see. Oh! Gabrielle, um, yes, this is the, is this the Bluebell Woods coloring book? Yes, it is. Um, and, um, let's see, they, are they light fast? Well, that's a great question. I'm not really sure if they're light fast. Um, I, they're very high quality, so I would guess so, because, um, I couldn't imagine that, um, like, if you look at the, at the barrel, here, let me move this so I don't accidentally, so if you look at the, the barrel of the pencil, um, it's actually, let me grab a Prismacolor so that I can show you the difference. Um, a lot of people are familiar with those. Okay, so we have... Let me find one here. So I have just any old Prismacolor. I just grabbed whatever. Um, so you can see here the difference. The The barrel of the Walnut Hollow is a lot larger. Um, the, the lead itself is a, a larger core. And the wood is also much harder. When you sharpen it, it's a lot smoother to sharpen. It doesn't shatter or fracture. The, the wood is a very high quality. So, and, and you can see also um, the difference here. Well, this is very blunt. Hold on, let me find one that's a little more sharp. <laughs> um, so you can see the difference here in, in the type of wood. Um, so this wood here, um, it just is, um, it's just like a, like a hardwood. And this seems like it's a pine. So it's, there's slightly different, um... But um, what, what I like is that both of these pencils are very, very, um, very smooth here. I'm going to apply the same exact pressure. Here's just a, let's see, what is this? Is this a scrap paper? Yeah. So I'm going to apply the same, same pressure. I'm going to just hold them both as if, as if they were one pencil. And I'm just going to show you. 
almost the same exact um, pigment. Now these are different. These are different uh, colors, obviously, but it's almost the same exact pigment lay down as a Prismacolor in the way that they um, the way that they release their color very well. So so um, I don't have to work hard to get a very very dark color. It's the same kind of effect that you would get from a Prismacolor. Um, the difference being is that um, they just feel um, they feel a little bit different in the way that I hold them because the barrel is slightly larger. Um, so let's switch back to this. Um, so yeah, it's it's um yeah more sturdy and also I think it's actually a little bit easier on my hands, a little more ergonomic. Um, so I am very much enjoying them. I, as a Prismacolor lover, um, I think that um, they are just right for me. Like they're, um, I've tried the the Polychromos, and um, I I would be working on one page for like six months with those pencils. I just can't um, can't seem to get into them. I have a couple of um, singles that I have in open stock, and I just um, I'm having a hard time. Um, using them because I, I feel like I just don't have the patience for it or I can't press hard enough that my hands are not used to that kind of heavy pressure. Um, yeah, it takes a long time. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a painter. I'm used to everything getting done in like an hour. <laughs> so even these colored pencils um, are very hard for me to, to adjust to. Um, yeah, too many layers for me. I, but you know, it, it, that the thing is, is like that's how some people love to work, and and they and they hate prismas and how fast they are. So, I think it really does matter. On, it depend on the person as to how how you feel about it. Yeah, it is a very slow medium. You're right. Um, but you know, that's also good. It makes us slow down and take our time and enjoy it, and um, you know not be stressed out there's no rush you can take two, six six months on one uh coloring page if you want and there's nothing wrong with that at all um but for me i guess i'm a lady on a mission i just uh i just want to get it done <laughs> okay so i'm gonna put a little bit right above I don't know if you guys can even see that. It's so faint. Um, right above the little bump of the nose there, just to kind of bring it out. And we're going to put some shadows here. Now I'm still using that red violet. And when I mix it with this yellow, it is creating a very nice... Once I go over this again with um, the the browns, you'll see it just all will come together. So I'm curious, what, what pages is everybody working on today? Like, uh, are you guys coloring too? And if you are, let me know in the, in the comments what you're working on. Because um, I would love to know what books uh, people are, are using at the moment. And um, let's see if there's any new books out there that people are working in. Oops, sorry. This rig is very tricky. <laughs> I got a new camera mount and I'm not sure if I like it. <laughs> but luckily it was inexpensive. Maybe that's why I don't like it. It's not very good quality. Um, but I'm just trying different ways of um, doing these videos for you. Uh, oh, the turtle and mythomorphia. I love that page. All right, Caitlin, you'll have to show us when you're done. Um, yeah, that, that was an epic project for me. It took me, I think it was three weeks of coloring. Oh, really? Thank you. So Caitlin says my page inspired her. Well, I'm glad that it did. 
Oh, so are you doing a nighttime scene as well? That would be awesome. Let's see. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's see. We've got the romantic country Grace is working in. Um, the last page in the book for a colorful life. Um, oh, okay. So that's is that like a, a Facebook group, Grace, that you're working with? And then. Um, Serena by Mardel Rubio. Oh, I, I'm jealous. I want that book. Um, that's for your live stream. And the poster in... Is that Villain Sound? I love that book. Um, I love all of Tomislav's books. Um, and Melissa got some Crayola crayons yesterday and have had fun playing with those. That's great. I love Crayola crayons. And then um, Grace says she only has one more pick to color in the Fantasy Faces by Molly Harrison. I have a um, I have a freebie for Molly Harrison that I printed out that I'm gonna try. Her work is so cute. So um, it's the um, the mermaid in the in the wine glass one. I'm gonna be uh, coloring that at some point. Um, it's so so pretty. Really cute cute work. Um, yeah, she's good. She's a great illustrator. All right, so you can see how I'm just sort of layering this color over that yellow. So the yellow still comes through and glows, but now it doesn't look like she has jaundice anymore, and instead it's just sort of mixing together and becoming this really um, complex uh, color. But that's good because that's how faces are. Um, we, we don't have, um, we don't just have one tone in our skin, we have so many tones. Um, so we're gonna go through, now I'm gonna add this same color to the mouth, just to, again, color harmony, keep everything together and consistent. Um, let's see, so Grace said... A Colorful Life is doing a march through romantic country for March. Oh, that's cute. It's a color along. A Colorful Life is in... Oh, okay, yes, I, I'm subscribed to her YouTube channel. Um, Mer March, a mermaid color along. That's great. So, yeah, there's always so many color alongs all over the place now. It's awesome because we always have something to pick from. Um, and then Caitlin says she's looking amazing. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, so I'm just going to go through and, uh, find all the areas where I want to add this, um, this red-violet color, and then we're going to go over it again with the browns, and maybe I'll try that, maybe I'll try the, um, the peachy tone, uh, just to see how that works out. Um... So I, ha I have yet, this is the first person I'm drawing with skin tones with these particular brand of pencils. So I, this is all an experiment for me. I'm doing a live on camera experiment, which is kind of dangerous. <laughs> if it doesn't turn out, I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> it's embarrassing, but um, let's see. Shalene Toland is doing Marmorphia, uh, where she's coloring from Mythomorphia. But any of the Morphia books will count. That's cool. I love all of Kirby Roseanne's work. Um, and then Jessica Robertson is doing a St. Patrick's Day color along. That's great. Um, color it. Colorful Seasons has a leprechaun that I'm coloring. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yep, I'm Irish, so I definitely uh, definitely celebrate St. Patty's Day for sure. Um, but. Uh, Oh, I'm Irish American, I guess I should say. I'm, I'm from the U.S., but um, my family heritage is is from Ireland. So um, we we uh, we are definitely a potato loving family. <laughs> my sister, like I think she subsists on French fries. <laughs> but <laughs> you don't have to be Irish to do that. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Looking forward to Phantomorphia. Me too. Um, I, I got Imagimorphia and Mythomorphia, so I'm missing one of his books, um, but I will get it at some point. Um, I have so many books now that I haven't even started coloring in them, so I really, um, I'm trying to focus on at least getting one page from each book done, so that way I have no guilt over having all of these books. <laughs> um... Because I, I feel like as, as soon as I color one page of the book, I've, I've made use of it, and so then, then it's justified. <laughs> but I don't like having them um, sitting around unused. I, I feel bad about those, those books, so I'm going to try and finish, finish what I've got first. Uh, let's see. So, Kate Grace says, Waiting on Mermaid Legends, a Russian mermaid coloring book. Jennifer Stay coloring book, and sh and uh, Caitlin says she wants Nightfall. Hmm. Um, I don't know if I've heard of that one. Nightfall. Oh, who's that by Caitlin? Wow, Grace, Grace, you have over four hundred books. Okay, now I feel a little bit better. Um, I do not have that many. I, I uh. I think I have about 25 or 30 books. I haven't counted them, but I, for just having started coloring less than half a year ago, I feel like I've acquired quite a lot. Um, but now, in comparison to you, I feel maybe not. <laughs> oh, by Maria Troll. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. So you're giving some books to other people. Well, that's great, Grace. Um, you know, if you're if you're having trouble getting rid of books you don't want, um, I know that a lot of um, shelters, like women's shelters, and um, even like um, therapy offices, um, use those um, use those uh, coloring books quite often. Um, I donated ten of my coloring books to charity when I finished the uh, Kickstarter campaign, and it went over so extremely well um, for the pe people who I donated it to. So. Um, you know, if you're having trouble unloading them, I'm sure there's something like that in your community um, where you can donate them. Um, and they'll even take ones that are half-colored. I know that um, a lot of the times they don't really care. Um, so you can either take the pages out that you've colored, or you can go ahead and just give them the book um, half-colored. Um, they don't really they don't really care um, because, you know, they, they give them to either kids who are going through some, some tough times and need a little un, unwinding, or even adults um, who are struggling through things. Um, Caitlin says she has a lot she would like to donate. Yeah, that's great. Yep, so I, what I would do is encourage you to find, like, a shelter or a, um, a therapy, counseling-type um, nonprofit in your community. Yeah, I did. I, when I donated mine, I also donated quite a lot of, um, supplies. I donated pencils and markers, um, just because that also really, really helps, um, you know, give them like a complete package where they can just go ahead and, yeah, you're welcome. I'm happy to give suggestions like that. I really do like giving back to the community. Um, I My mom taught us that, um, you know, even though um, we weren't the richest kids in the world, that we were extremely lucky growing up that we had um, every, all the basic things that we needed. Um, she taught us that, um, you know, giving back to the community and, and donating and volunteering and giving back your time is extremely important um, because... Um, not everybody is so lucky, um, and, and we really we really have to remember that. And in order to remember it, it's best to actually look at that in the face, if that makes sense. And, and really, and, and it makes me grateful every time when I, like, I always feel awesome when I volunteer. Um, like, I never, I never walk away with a bad experience when I volunteer because I, I realize, like, wow, I really do... I'm, I'm very, very lucky and grateful for everything that I have, and also grateful that I had the opportunity to help out and share and, and um, you know, um, benefit those who maybe aren't so lucky and need help, um, because you never know when you're going to need help yourself, 
And, and this, this act of, of helping really does um, sort of like reaffirm your, your uh, love for humanity in a way, um, because the people that you do help are always so sweet and grateful. I've never had anybody, um, you know, disrespectful or ungrateful uh, for the help. Uh, let's see. Oh, I've got a lot of comments. Sorry. Uh, Caitlin. Um, oh, thank you. She says she loves my morals and views on life. We need more like you in this world would be so much better. Well, all of my morals and values came from my mom. Um, she is an amazing and wonderful lady, um, who has, um, she's, she's been through a lot herself. Um, she raised us as a single parent, and, um, you know, she just, uh, really did her best and, and really tried very hard to, to teach us things like that. Um, but, you know, it's funny, um, you know, <laughs> oh, I will, I, I will tell her that. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, but, you know, I think that, um, it's it's difficult um, for some people to get in that spirit because um, you know if if you are going through difficulty yourself sometimes you forget you know that all of the blessings and the things that you do have in your life you know it's easy to focus on the negative and to and to feel bad for yourself or to to feel um, like things aren't fair and a lot of the time life really isn't fair like. You know, the kids that are born into poverty, that's, that's not fair. They didn't ask for that, but it's just how life is. Um, you know, it's easy to focus on the negative things, but by giving back to the community and, and, um, and donating your time or your money or whatever, um, it, it really does, um, it kind of like reminds you of where you are, if that makes sense. It, it gives you a sense of, um, perspective about about the world and, and the things that you could be facing you know like people who are going through really debilitating diseases or um, you know needing needing um, a lot of help maybe they're struggling through addiction or some other um, very difficult affliction you know th those people th they deserve all of our compassion and kindness because we just I mean we just don't know um, how they got there or what they're going through um, everybody Everybody is always trying their best. Um, let's see. Um, let's see, what's this? I'm scared to color in Serene and Girls with a Poem by Momo Girl. Grace, why are you scared? Um, is it that the pages are difficult or... Uh, that that you uh hmm. <clears throat> well I think uh fear sometimes comes from from the the worrying of failure, I think maybe. Um I think every artist goes through that fear at some point or another, but it is important to remember that um, the only way that we learn is through doing, and the only way um, to grow is to fail sometimes or to make mistakes. Um, if you're making mistakes or messing up, that means that you're trying hard to learn something new. And um, so, and, and the thing is, is like, yeah, worried about messing them up. Yeah, I get that. I mean, I have that feeling sometimes too. Um, and, um, and, and so I, I understand where you're coming from there and, and it's hard. I, I totally get it. But I think in the end, you have, you have to remember maybe, maybe start out with a page that you don't care as much about, try it out, see what happens, and then take what you learn and apply it to the pages that you really do care about. Um, but also keep in mind, you know, you have to kind of be gentle with yourself because um, art is a difficult thing to learn. It's not going to be an overnight success kind of a story. Um, that's just not how it works. Um, but at the same time, if you're enjoying, if you're enjoying the learning process and, and um, figuring things out, then um, in the end you're going to pursue it because you're having fun 
and you will naturally get better just by um, continuing to do it, if that makes sense. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, I've been painting and drawing for over 25 years, and um, I, I do it all the time. I do it every day. So that's, that's a lot of hours of working through and, and a lot of bad art I've done. I mean, I, a lot of my work I would never, never show online, but the thing of it is, is you don't have to show everybody everything you do. You, you control whether or not people see it, so you should feel safe in your own environment to mess up um, and not worry about what people say because um, in the end, if you don't want to show people, you don't have to. Um, so you can you can go ahead and play, and, and there are many, many pieces um, and, and even coloring pages that I've done where I'm not going to show anybody because I don't want to. Um, I messed it up and, and I learned from it and I'm going to move on, but um, at the same time, it, it's my choice whether or not I share that. Um, and you have that same um, freedom to do whatever whatever you're comfortable with. So I think, um, yeah, don't don't be scared. Maybe just pick a page you don't care too much about. Try it, try out what you want to do. Um, I know a lot of people also uh, they'll they'll photocopy it. I'm not sure about the legality of that, so I don't know if I would recommend it. Um, and and practice first on a on a photocopied page. Um, you can try that. I think it's probably okay so long as you don't, um, you're not photocopying and passing it out to other people to color. I think that, that, um, the artists are generally pretty understanding of that. Um, for my pages, um, my book in particular, you are free to photocopy it to practice with. That's why I also gave people the, the PDF from Kickstarter. Um, anybody who got my Kickstarter book, I did um, provide the PDF for those folks as well, so that way you can just go ahead and print it out um, and try different experiments first. Um, if you like digital coloring, you could take a photo, import it into a digital coloring app, and um, play around with different color schemes first there, and then go ahead and color it traditionally if you want. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can sort of like um, ease your mind about um, how to color a page without actually going straight into the page itself. Um, but again, you know, also just keep in mind this is this is all a learning process. So, okay, so now she's pretty red. So I, I've gone from the the yellow scale to now the red scale, <laughs> and this is how it goes. It's like a push pull. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and neutralize all of that with my burnt umber. And I'm also going to pull this um, this light peach color. I have not tried it yet. I have no idea how it's going to work. Um, the the rubbing this like, these are vintage pencils, so the rubbing on it is kind of uh, like the the printing on it rather has kind of rubbed away. But it's nine zero one zero light flesh and nine zero one two burnt umber umber. So you're going to see me switch between these two pencils now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, maybe before I put it on my page and just uh, grab a scrap here and see how this comes out. This is pressing hard and soft. This is a nice color actually um, and I don't normally use these fleshy tones but I'm going to show you how you can bring it all together. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to use that and let's just see how this layers. Yeah, that's nice. Okie dokie. So now I've got all of my undertones, um, and I'm just going to zoom in so you can really see. So we've got yellows and reds, and it doesn't look very much like flesh right now. It's just, it, she looks like she's got sunburn or something. Um, it looks very funny. And this happens at this stage. These are all the undertones for the skin, um, and we haven't really pulled everything together yet. So... Um, now we're gonna now we're gonna start to bring it all together and bring it home. Um, and the way that you do that is by going over everything with these neutral tones, which will take down the that vibrant color, make it more neutralized. You can also do this with the complements of the colors. 
Um, but I'm actually pretty excited about um, the, the way that this color space is happening right now. So I think I'm going to stick with the browns and the, and the flush um, and go over it that way. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can at least finish off the face today, so that way you guys really get a complete sense of how I'm doing this. Um, and what we're gonna, what we're gonna do is, uh, start to bring the values in too, so... So now, now I'm going to start pressing harder. You're going to see I'm going to start blending and really trying to determine exactly how dark and light these, these areas are. Um, so this is like the, the refining stages of, of coloring. Um, just getting all of these. And you can see as I press harder, my, my fingers do get closer to the pencil point. So I was back here before. I think Caitlin mentioned this. So I was back here, you know, somewhere in this range, coloring like this. I had a very light stroke. So if you have trouble and you press hard a lot, it's probably because you're both you're using heavy pressure and you're also closer to the pencil tip. So by coming back here and by using the flatter edge of the pencil, you can really create a very nice control over the, over the pressure that you get. So that's a nice little tip for you. Um, and thanks for Caitlin for bringing that up. Um, let's zoom in a little so you guys get a better idea. So now I'm going to decide what her hair color is because I got to put in the eyebrows and the eyelashes and all that. Um, I think I'm going to make her a brunette because I'm pretty much uh, drawing my uh, skin uh, color. <laughs> so I'm going to also throw in some of this burnt ochre into her eyebrows to really bring them uh, into the color space and I'll use that same brown also for the eyelashes and I left these um, open and didn't make them black because I thought um, you know if you wanted to go crazy with this page you could make her hair blue and give her blue eyelashes or blue I mean, you could give her any color hair and any color. Uh, so since it's a fantasy page, I, I didn't um, I didn't put the black in because I thought maybe um, maybe you might want to choose a different color eyelash. But for me, I'm gonna do that now. Now, the, now that I put them in, I'm gonna need the shadow underneath. And now her face is flowing down away from because it's her cheek. So I'm going to put in the shadow of the eyelashes just under her eye, eyelashes there, but it's flowing down. And I'm also going to throw in a nice little, because this is the darkest area, that little hollow in her eye socket. So we want to, we want to really um, make that darker. And the more contrast you have, the more realistic your skin will look. A lot of people I see, a lot of beginners especially, will not want to go very dark with the skin. Uh, maybe concerned that it might look um, too dark or muddy. But the trick is just to understand where, where those darks go. Um, and that comes from, um, you know, over time you're going to get knowledge of that. I re highly recommend you look at people, um, either photographs or yourself. If you get stuck, that's the best way to learn. Um, and uh, over time, you will be able to draw without looking at anything. It's just once you get that visual mem memory, um, it's like a little encyclopedia of, um, of visual understanding, I guess. <laughs> once you get that built up over time, you can go without using a photo um, or, or uh, um, looking at yourself. But... Um, for now, uh, if you have issues, uh, go ahead and take a look and see how it works in life, and then then it, all the mystery is taken out of it. Um, and so a lot of the times if I'm doing a drawing and I'm not sure how it's going to go, 
I will take a whole bunch of self photos um, just of myself and even if I'm not drawing myself I can use it as a guide and understand um, how it works. And the nice thing though is that um, you don't have to be perfect. Uh, sometimes the mistakes and the, ch and the differences are uh, what makes things interesting. So it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to do everything realistically. Um, that's just kind of, I, I, I've just been, I took a lot of figure drawing classes and I, I've just been drawing people for a long time. Um, I was a portrait commission artist for um, a while there when I was trying to be a professional artist for a living, which was very difficult. Um, I found out that people don't like to pay for their artwork. <laughs> so that's fun. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, I just have a lot of background and training. If you don't, then you can get it. Um, another thing that I do all the time that I love to do is I will sit in a cafe and I will draw people without them knowing. Usually people are on their cell phones, they have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I will draw their face and what's exciting about that exercise is that um, you never know when they're going to get up and leave. Um, so it's, a, it's like a race against some clock you don't even know. Um, so sometimes I get a full drawing in, sometimes I don't. Um, but that's excellent practice. Um, so if you are very, very dedicated and want to learn how to draw and, and color people um, realistically, that's a great free way. Um, you, maybe not totally free, you might have to buy a coffee or something, but you can sit in a cafe for hours. They will not bother you if you're drawing. Um, and um, go ahead and and uh, draw people for free. <laughs> I still do that all the time. I love it. Um, I call it the coffee challenge and, uh, and it's uh, a lot of fun. Um, another thing that I do a lot is self-portraits. Um, I always have myself available, um, so a lot of the times I don't post it because I feel like it's sort of weird um, to do too many self-portraits. Um, just just because I think people think that you're like full of yourself or whatever uh, but I do it because I have myself readily available and I'm very patient with myself I don't have to um, but drawing people from life is much much better than drawing from photos when you're starting out um, it, it gives you a sense of the three-dimensional space and really gives you a better understanding um, that's how I was taught um, that's how I learned um, but um, whatever you can get your hands on that's, that's the best so if you're concerned about messing things up uh, maybe gain some confidence by you know trying um, trying pages that you don't care about or, or practicing and and you can you know maybe sit with your coloring book in a cafe and maybe yeah, try and yeah. find somebody who's sitting at the right angle or, or move around until you get um, the right mm -hmm. angle for them and, and, and see if you can uh, maybe use use somebody as a reference for your for your coloring work. Um, another idea is always to ask a friend if you can take some photos of them. Um, I do this um, all the time. Me and my little sister were constantly doing photo shoots for me um, and I really appreciate um, her help in all of that. Um, um, and also some other friends of mine um, occasionally will, will pose for me or let me take their photo. Um, so all of these are really helpful and um, artists do that all the time and there is no cheating in that. That's, that's just how artists learn. Um, that, that's, you know, looking at things and, and learning how to draw them is natural. That's part of the process. So don't feel bad if you have to do that too. You don't have to, you don't have to be good. Um, at everything right away without looking at it. That's kind of an impossible, I don't know, I mean, I guess some people could do it, but um, I'm not one of them. I, I, I need to look at something to learn how to draw at first, and that's okay. Everybody's different. Um, so you can see right here, I'm already um, going over all of these reddish tones and, and yellow tones with this brown 
um, in the areas where I want to make it darker. Um, and then I'll go over everything with that light peach color at the end and give it like a nice final seal mm -hmm. and blend it. I think I'm getting text messages. Sorry about the buzzing. Um, let's see. Sketch Cantation Art says, hello, great to catch you live. Well, thank you. I don't know if I've seen you here before, but welcome. Um, always happy to, to uh, do these live videos and hopefully I'll be able to pick them up again. Um, oh, Color Book Addict, okay, gotcha. Sometimes it's tough for me to make the connection. <laughs> well, awesome. Good to see you here. Um, that's great. I love seeing my friends on Instagram over here. <laughs> it's like we're all getting connected together. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm just going through and... Adding more depth and darkness um, wherever I feel um, the, sh the shadows would go. And, um, and I build these up over time, so it's not, I'm not going to probably ar arrive at the very final depth. Um, I just probably won't have enough time in this because we're already at two hours. Um, but I, I would, I would like to show you, so maybe I'm going to skip the neck and, um, the rest of the, um, the shoulders and focus on the face for you guys. So that way we can at least get something looking pretty finished. Um, so sorry that I take so long to color. It's just how I am. I can't, I, I don't know why I can't go in right away with the final color. I just can't do it. <laughs> um, let's see. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. She says it's looking good. Um, yeah, I'm having fun. I'm loving chatting with you guys. So I'm so glad that I could do this this morning. I was supposed to actually be BMXing, but I don't feel very well um, physically. Um, so I, I told my boyfriend, I was like, sorry, honey, I'm not going with you. <laughs> so, um, so I figured I would do a live video instead since I have the time. And, um, let's see here. I'm going to put some darkness right under the chin here, just where that little divot happens. Now the trick with the chin is, like with the underside of the, the nose, it is very easy to make it look like a like a beard or something. So you gotta be very very light on that spot, not not go too heavy, um, especially with women. Oh, you guys are awesome! You didn't I didn't leave you you didn't leave me. I mean I didn't mean to leave you. <laughs> My Wi-Fi seems like it's a funny, uh, having a funny trouble, and this has happened to me before. I'm not sure whether it's that my, the quality of the video is too high for the, the Wi-Fi bandwidth or something, but, um, so sorry about that. We, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but, thank you guys for sticking with me anyway. Uh, let's see. Oops, I lost my chat here on the... Let's see. Um, here it is. The chat. There, there we go. Alright, sorry about that, dudes. Um, so we're going to... You guys can see this, okay? Yep. Okay, so we're just gonna. I, 
I'm not going to go all the way through all of the skin. I'm going to focus on the face. So that way I can kind of get that all um, as polished as I can for you guys. Because I will need to take a break um, in a half an hour. And um, I actually have a, a scheduled meeting that I have to go to. <laughs> I know, meeting on a Sunday. But, um... Yep, so I only have another half hour I can hang out, so let's see if we can get at least uh, something fairly finished looking for the face, and then, um, alright, okay, so now I've gone through most of the dark areas, um, with that brown, and now I'm going to use this, uh, this, uh, what's light flesh, and this is still the Walnut Hollow Farm. This is 9010. And I'm going to go over uh, everything now. Um, so we're going to mesh it all together. And make it feel like one solid surface with this color. Now I may skip some of the very lightest areas. That's just because um, we don't want to darken it too much um, in the areas where it should be light. But we're gonna nice. We're gonna give her a nice golden, fleshy color. Let's see if you guys can see. And now these undertones are coming through, even though we've put the brown over it, you can see these reds and the violet, uh, red violet, um, and the yellows that I put down are still coming through, um, especially when I blend them all together. And if it's too much, which I feel it's happening here, is it's a little too red still, we can adjust it. Um, luckily I'm not pressing so hard as to take out all the tooth of the paper. Um, just giving it a light burnish, um, so so there is still room on that paper tooth for me to go ahead and correct that, so I will do that. Um, and I'll show you how I do that. So let's get this here going. And I'm going to shock and appall most of you, I think, um, by what I'm going to do next. Um, I am going to use one of these Faber-Castell Spectra, Spectra colors. I do need this um, green color, so I'm going to use it. So um, you, you're going to think I'm crazy for, for using this green on her face, but um, this, is, this is too red here, and um, I'm going to zoom in so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, you're going to think I'm crazy, but um, what we're going to do is very, very lightly. Um, you, you're probably not going to even notice that it's green but I'm gonna take out that redness and if you're a makeup girl you know exactly what I'm doing here um, uh, I, I use green on my face sometimes to get rid of my ruddy complexion um, so what I'm doing is I'm again mixing the complement so this is too red for me so I'm mixing green which is the opposite, and now it's taking it out of that red zone. And you can't even see the green, but you can see that it's not as red anymore. I hope. I hope so. Um, I hope the camera's picking this up. So it went from really red, so now it's starting to be neutralized. And I just know this from color theory. Um, color theory is very important to colorists. Um, but anybody can pick it up. Um, I learned color theory mostly through um, art classes. But there are several good books on it. Um, the one that I, learned, that I learned from is very difficult to read, but it is very thorough and comprehensive. It's called Itten, um, The Elemental Guide to Color. And um, it is a color theory book that most um, universities use, um, but it is, like I said, a difficult read. So if you don't like reading um, very dry and difficult textbooks, then I would um, recommend maybe um, taking a look and seeing if there's um, maybe a nicer book out there. I'm, I'm not sure um, 
like I said, I learned from that book and just from, from working with color. Uh, but now, but now that, that, uh, red is no longer red, now it's like a nice, uh, brown color. So now I'm going to swap back over to this peachy tone and just go ahead and seal that in and see how it looks when it's all put together. Yeah, that's much better. So even if you make a mistake with your skin tone, there's always a way to correct it with the opposite color. So if you make too much of a, of a red, then mix in the green. If you make too much purple or whatever color, it's always the opposite. So whatever color on the color wheel you're on, uh, let me show you zoomed out. So no matter what color you're, you're um, having trouble with, if, if it's too much of that color um, and you don't want it, then just look at whatever the opposite is. Um, so, so yellow goes to violet, blue and orange, um, and we have green and red and so forth. So, so just look at whatever the opposite is on the wheel and, um, and that's the way that you can correct a too saturated of a color. So I'm glad I made that mistake because it's a good way to show you how to correct it. Um, and, that, and that will work for any subject matter, not just skin tone, but anything that you're coloring. If you have trouble, just mix in the, the opposite one and bam. <laughs> and Hella says, wow, that's color magic. I think so too. I love color. I think color is magic. I think the color you can express mood and feeling and, and, um, and all sorts of things with color, um, light and... Oh, it's so amazing. So I agree. I think that color is very magical. And that's why I believe that color is just as difficult as the technical drawing of a coloring book page. I feel that color, um, there are a lot of great, great artists out there that draw coloring books and, and they don't use color well and, and vice versa. People out there that use color very well but can't draw very well. Um, you know, like as far as like the basic um, technical drawing goes, um, I, I oh, I'm so sorry, guys. This is getting a little frustrating for me. Um, I don't know why it keeps cutting out. Um, but what I was saying before is, I feel like colorists are artists too. Um, it, we're all just at a different um, skill level. We're all at a different um, learning stage in the process. But um, coloring. Um, Coloring is just as difficult as, as drawing the original, uh, like the sketch or whatever. Um, and I feel like um, a lot of the times colorists put themselves down because they don't feel like they are artists. But you are, guys. You are artists too because um, color is just as difficult as um, shape and form. Um, there's a lot to it. It's a very complex subject matter. And, um, and that's why I believe that um, coloring books... And, um, and, uh, and coloring other people's work and people coloring my work is so amazing because it, it truly is a collaborative process. Um, we are two artists coming together to make one final piece. And the, the, the final work is, is so much greater than, than the sum of the two parts separately. Um, it's, it's really um, amazing how a page can come to life with just a little bit of color on it so um you guys you're artists too and it is not easy what we're doing um so you should feel proud of yourself um for for trying hard and for for learning things and um yeah it's it's uh it's all it's all part of the, the art world color um Okay, we've got too much red there, too. Well, I'll fix that in a second. Let me just uh, see how this turns out first. See if I need more. Now, I'm okay with a little pink in her cheeks down here, but again, I feel like it's a little too much. And that is okay. I'm going to use my green, my magic green pencil again. And we're going to fix that. So there's there's uh, there's really no mistakes. You can always fix them. Um, and if you guys, if anybody ever has like a page that they're stuck on, like say you guys, you're like, oh, I've been working on this page, and all of a sudden I get stuck, and I, yeah, I'm gonna zoom in again so you guys can really get a good see. Um, oh well, Caitlin, I 
Okay, so Caitlin says, thank you. So many other educators make fun of us and put us down for coloring. And I feel like that is awful. Um, I think the elitism that goes into that kind of behavior is um, unfounded. Um, those artists, they started at the same place you did, guys. Um, they, they didn't know how to draw or color or do any um, color work when they first started. And the fact that they would put anybody down, again, I feel like... Um, this kind of behavior is just so, like, oh, it, it actually gets, it gets me mad. Like, I, I don't, um, I don't understand why anybody would put anybody down for enjoying themselves and using, um, a page to start them out. If that's what they feel like doing, like, what harm is it doing anybody else? It's totally illegal. That's what the, that's what the pages are for, is to color them, and, and anybody who puts anybody down for the way that they work or what they're doing, um, they're, I believe that they're wrong for doing that because that's um, there's no place in the art world for that kind of judgmental attitude. Um, it, it makes me feel like um, they don't understand uh, what art is all about by by behaving in that in that way. Um, art is about expressing yourself and being creative and. And doing what makes you happy, at least to me, that should be what it's about. It's not about um, proving that you're better than somebody or um, any kind of stupid, selfish reason like that. I, I feel like that is um, misguided. And the people who put people down for whatever um, expression they want to do, um, they, they just um, don't even listen to them. They're wrong. Um, they, don't, they, don't, they don't get it. Um, that's not, that's, art is all about being yourself and doing what you, what makes you happy. So that's, um, that's my very strong feelings about that. <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry. And you know, if you, if you face that, I mean, I faced criticism from other artists saying, why are you coloring? You can draw. And people like put me down for coloring even though I have the ability to do whatever I want, it doesn't matter to them. They think that I'm, like, I don't know, being stupid or something. I, I don't get it. But I, you know, I tell them I'm like, because I feel like it. That's my answer, and it's totally valid. Like, I feel like coloring, and that's what I feel like doing. So, um, yeah, it's it sucks. I think that people are, um, can be jerks, you know. Not everybody, but... Um, People like that who, who um, and they don't get it. I mean, if, if you've ever colored, you know how relaxing and therapeutic it is. When I'm drawing my own work and when I'm painting my own paintings, I get I get much more emotionally invested in them because it's, it's my work and I want it to be beautiful and I'm a little bit of a perfectionist about it. So I get more stressed out about my, my work that, um, that like, I'm going to be selling or I'm trying to, um, you know, if I'm doing a commission, that's even bigger stress. Um, so I get stressed out about that stuff. But when I sit down to color, I don't care if it turns out bad. You know, I'm not trying to sell it. I'm not trying to, I'm not even trying to like, um, you know, do anything with it after I'm done. I might give it as a gift if anything, but, um, if I like it, but like, yeah, so coloring is all about just like, de-stressing, relaxing, unwinding. It's not about being ha being perfect or having a, an awesome like thing that you can sell. So if 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 people don't get that then they just that's on them. It's their loss. <laughs> so All right, I'm going to zoom out again cuz I think I was uh, coloring off camera. Sorry about that, dudes. Um, and then I'm just going to wrap this up here. Um, I'm pretty happy with how the face is starting to come together. I feel like I've taught you guys a lot about, um, how to layer and undertones. And this is what I would consider advanced skin shading. This is, um, this is not your beginner approach, but I don't feel like, um, you guys need to be babied. Um, you guys know how to color. Um, you, you can already probably figure out how to color skin um, with the, the skin tones that come in your box. But I wanted to show you how to color with colors that you might not think are would work, um, but they do. Um, so it's just a, 
a matter of um, understanding how that, that whole color theory works and, and how to blend the colors together. Um, and if you like this video, I can do more. Um, I will be probably coloring many more pages from my Bluebell Woods since that's been a request that I've noticed quite a lot. Um, and if and, and I realize my book is quite challenging um, because I don't provide any shading. Um, I did that because I wanted to allow the colorist to choose the light source, but I realize now that that might be difficult for very many colorists who are just starting out and who don't understand light as well. Um, so I will go ahead and color pages for you so that way you have a better guide on maybe how you could approach them. And also going forward, um, my next book will have more shading involved so that way, um, you know, I'm listening to you guys. I'm, I'm learning what you want and what you don't and uh, I'm going to develop and learn as a coloring book illustrator just as much as, as you guys learn. Um, how to color. So it's it's going to be a learning experience for everybody and I think that's awesome. Um, growing and getting better is the name of the game. Uh, as long as you improve then it doesn't matter where you're at, you're going to get better. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm coming up close to the time that I'm going to need to um, skedaddle. So I'm just going to open it up. Um, if anybody has any questions or would like me to show them something in particular, um, I'm really happy to do that. Um, we can take a little break and I can demo something else if you need. Um, and uh, Or just uh, if you have any questions, general discussion. Um, <laughs> then go ahead and, and give it uh, in the chat there and I will be happy to answer. And I really appreciate you guys. I can't believe um, many of you have been here for over two hours now, um, hanging out with me. That's amazing. Um, you guys are starting to become like my my best buds online, you know. <laughs> I really uh, feel like I'm connected to you. So thank you so much for hanging out. I know this was an unannounced um, live stream. Like I said, I wasn't planning on doing this, but um, since I wasn't feeling well and couldn't participate, in my original plans for this this morning, um, I thought, why not give you guys a little coloring lesson? Because I don't need to feel 100% to color. I can I can be a little under the weather and still still color. All right, so this is by no means finished, but I hope that you get a sense of how I would complete it. Maybe I'll pick it up again and finish it. In another session um, at some point if you guys are interested um, but yeah thank you guys um, I had so much fun talking I feel like this discussion was very very positive um, everybody is so sweet um, you guys I really do love coloring with you so um, yeah thank you so much and uh, I hope you have a wonderful magical time coloring